The following portion of Bloom is sponsored by Lifeguard Imaging. Coming up on Bloom, find out how our region's only university-based academic health system is expanding in Tampa Bay to make health care more accessible and affordable for you. Our idea, along with the university, is not just to drive world-class academics and research, but it's also to drive world-class clinical care and really take care of the whole person. And meet a highly decorated combat veteran who battled trauma and won. We'll have those stories and more as Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging, starts now. I'm Gail Guayardo. Welcome to Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging. Today, we're exploring a well-known proverb, health is wealth. So today our guests will emphasize the idea that good health is one of the most valuable assets a person can have and that being healthy is more important than material wealth. Here in Tampa Bay, we're lucky. One of only seven places in the nation where people have access to state-of-the-art technology that can scan for heart disease and hundreds of forms of cancer in their earliest stages. The technology is so impactful, it's saving one to three lives every day. And we have one of those life-saving stories to share with you today. Joining me now from Lifeguard Imaging is the Vice President of Business Development, former Tampa Bay Buccaneer and NFL great Martin Gramatica, along with veteran Jeff Thomas, who is here to share his life-saving story. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Good afternoon. Good to see you. So I, I've heard just a little bit of your story, but tell us more, what happened? Well, my wife encouraged me to get this, this heart scan. She actually went for the heart scan, and she said, Jeff, you gotta do this. And frankly, I actually encouraged me to do it. And the first time I had it, because I'm a Gulf War combat veteran, I did four tours in, in, in the Gulf War, I was afraid going through this machine here for the, for the, uh, the body exam. And so the first time, I, I kind of freaked out. So the second time, Frank, said, you gotta do it. So I, I kind of calmed myself down. My wife did the, did the tests. They came out zero positive, really great for her. And, but she was concerned about my health, so I did that. And the next morning, I got a call from one of his workers or going said, you need to check your email and the pictures. And my, my, the, the scan they did showed that my, my calcium buildup was over 900 points. Wow. And I go, wow, that's, that kind of freaked me out. And she said, pictures of my heart and stuff that they did. So I talked to my doctor beforehand. He said, oh, you don't need this. We already did a physical, the blood work. You don't, don't waste your time to do this. But I, that morning, I sent him the results by email. And about an hour later, he called me up. My doctor's never called me up. He goes, Thomas, you got to get in here. We got to do the PET scan, the CAT scan, the ultrasound, the whole works. I'm going, what? I was, I was freaking out. He said, we found some things, but we need to recheck it. So I went through all the, this, this went on for about four months. And, and every time I went, they found something different. And one of my uh, lip notes on my, uh, my lungs are lighting up. So they wanted to do more tests. And one of my, my, um, one of my arteries were clogged up, it was 65% was clogged up, which they didn't know about it. But they only need to put a stint in it, they have 70%. So this is, Martin, this just speaks to like the, the countless stories that we hear. You might get a clean checkup from your doctor, but until you get a real look at what's going on inside your body, you don't know. You're absolutely right, Gail, because uh, physicals, you know, they may do some blood work. They may, you know, they'll listen to our heart, they'll listen to our lungs, but the, the physicals, they're not looking inside with technology. The way I equate it is when we take our car to a mechanic, they don't just start taking it apart in hopes to find something. They plug in the diagnostic or the check engine light comes in, so now they know where to fix. And that's what we're doing at Lifeguard Imaging. We're providing information to the patients so like Mr. Thomas can go to his doctor, who by the way told him not to do the scan, but now this technology helped his doctor treat what was going on with Mr. Thomas. And, and the full body scan is gonna detect hundreds of cancers. In this case, we, th we detected something in the lungs that they were able to follow up on. And that's what we're doing. We're providing information to the patients so they can be proactive. So in addition to the heart issues, they found some something in your lung. The lungs, yeah, they found, uh, but what, what happened? Now, since I had the heart scan done, the body scan, I'm going back every four months for a CAT scan. Wow. Now, now I'm on the program. At first they didn't want to do it, now he says, we got, we got to follow up. Now when I did, I did the last thing I did, the PET scan, they found some lip notes in my lungs that were lighting up. So they had to go in and take a biopsy. And they found out they had stage one. Not cancer, 
but an autoimmune deficiency, which could lead to something like lung cancer. So now they're checking on it. Is so, it fair to say that lifeguard imaging saved your life? I, I believe so. I believe they saved my life as a wake-up call. And I, I tell my other military buddies, oh, Thomas, I don't need that. Go do it. Do it for your wife. You know, a happy wife, happy life. I you love know, it. Do it because your wife really cares about you. I love it. So, hey. Jane, yeah. Oh, th well, thank you so much for sharing your story. And, of course, from all of us at Bloom, thank you for your service. We really appreciate all of our military members, including you. So yeah, thank I, you so I want to thank everybody that served their country. Only 1% of people in America actually serve their country. Yeah. You know, we're young. We get out. And we gave our best lives to serve our country. And we do it because we love our country. That's beautiful. And I've had a chance to travel to 68 countries around the world with the Air Force. There's no place like America. There's no place like it. Yeah. No place like it. And Gail, uh, this is why we developed the scans of honors for military, you know, military members. because we thank him so much at Lifeguard Imaging. All right. So make sure you tell your buddies. There's <laughs> even a special call today right, at, right now, 813-582-5222, or visit lifeguardimaging.com. You'll receive a Bloom special offer, a free heart scan when you mention Gail or Bloom. That's a $599 value, so call today, 813-582-5222 for this special offer. We'll be back with more Bloom right after this. The preceding portion of Bloom was sponsored by Lifeguard Imaging. You're watching Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging, saving lives through early detection. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. The inaugural Tampa General Hospital State of the Union is in the books, and I had the incredible opportunity to MC and witness firsthand how our region's only university-based academic health system is expanding to make healthcare more accessible and affordable for you. At the helm, TGH's president and CEO, John Corris, who stood before hundreds of business, political, and civic leaders to share TGH's vision for the future. He was joined by the chairman of the TGH Board of Directors, Drew Graham, Dr. Charles Lockwood, the executive vice president at USF Health, and Tampa Mayor Jane Castor. There was a fireside chat so people in the audience could have their voices heard. And it gave all of us another opportunity to learn more about the hospital's commitment to world-class academic medicine and what's being done to meet the growing needs of our community. And joining me now is Tampa General Hospital's president and CEO, John Corris. John, it is such a pleasure to have you on Bloom. Oh, great, it's great to be here. So I just wanted to thank you again for the incredible opportunity to be at this event. It was such an eye-opener. Can you tell folks about the State of the Union? Yeah, you know, the State of the Union was sort of an experiment for us. We have a long history of doing a lot of good work for this community, the region, and the state. We thought it made some sense to try a State of the Union address to business leaders um, and really spend the evening with them digging deep into the work that we're doing, both as an academic health system as well as um, an asset for the community. And it really went well. First of all, thank you for emceeing the event. Um, it was great, it was, and it was really well received. People enjoyed it. People enjoyed learning about what was going on in the act, actual health system. So we're gonna do it every year, we're gonna, and it's gonna become bigger and bigger as each year goes by. Yeah, it was incredible to see all the things that Tampa General is doing, and, and I wanted to talk more about the academic difference model and the partnership between TGH and USF Health. Yeah, we have a very <coughs> rich relationship with USF Health that actually goes back to 1970 when USF Health was established, and specifically the Marsani College of Medicine. And so we have a very deep relationship with them. Our relationship grows stronger and stronger, and it's predicated around three real focuses. The first is clinical care. The second is academics and teaching. And the third is research. And so we're going to continue to grow that relationship. And how is that partnership strengthening the healthcare workforce and the infrastructure in our region? Well, it's strengthening the workforce and our infrastructure in lots of different ways. One way that comes to mind is our medical and research district. So over the last five years, Dr. Charlie Lockwood and I, along with the university president, Ria Law, have been working on building out a medical and research district right here in the city itself. 
And so what we're doing is we're bringing together physician scientists, private equity, venture capital, um, life science, uh, biotech, all together into the city to grow the academic enterprise. And what that does, it does many things. One of the things it does do is it attracts physician scientists from all over the world to come to Tampa, to call home, to spend time, to provide clinical care, research, and teaching to the people in this community. And so we're excited about it because it's actually working and making a difference in the city itself and across the region. What are some particular recent highlights of the medical system and, and what is the vision for the next decade? Well, a couple of particular highlights is um, one, we just announced this last week. We are, um, we're in the middle of building a behavioral health hospital that's a freestanding academic uh, behavioral health hospital inside the district itself. It's a collaboration between the University of South Florida, TGH, the state of Florida, and it's bringing to the community both clinical care, academics through our medical students and our residents, as well as research. And that's going to be squarely, that's on Kennedy, um, at, in, in the, squarely in the center of our medical and research district. So we're excited about that. It's going to generate more jobs. Um, it's generating lots of innovation around behavioral health. Um, and we couldn't do it the way we're doing it without the university and without actually the collaboration we're having with the state. You know what I really thought was so special, John, is that when you opened up the fireside chat to the people in the audience, you know, it was it intended for questions, which there were a lot of great questions, but there were just people, like everyday people, that wanted to stand up and yeah. applaud the hospital and applaud you for everything from the work you're doing with veterans to preventative health and wellness. I mean, people are like, just keep it up. Keep this hospital growing in the direction that it's going. I mean, you, we, we have to take care of this community holistically. So you gotta think about the care that we provide through sort of mind, body, and spirit. And that's exactly what you witnessed that night. People were getting up talking about the impact that the team is having on, their f the, the, on the physical nature of the care that we provide, but also the, the mental and spiritual nature of the care that we provide through our health and wellness programs. And so our idea, along with the university, is not just to drive world-class academics and research, but it's also to drive world-class clinical care and really take care of the whole person, which is very important to us. And, and important too, as you cast the net. I mean, the expansion is credible, so you're getting this quality care into neighborhoods where it's needed. And you personally mentioned that accessibility, affordability, access, that's all that's top priority for TGH and USF Health. Uh, absolutely. Um, last year, as an example of that, la last year we gave back to this community and community benefit, which includes care that we provide at no cost to people that can't afford it, a little over $300 million last year. Wow. And we're very proud of that. Also, our footprint is expanding. So we are a Tampa-based organization, but we're also in Hernando County now, we're in Citrus County, we're down in Babcock Ranch, by Fort Myers, we're in Palm Beach County, we're spreading across the entire state of Florida. Six years ago, we were roughly 7,500 team members and physicians. Today, we're about 15,000 team members and physicians, and that footprint will continue to grow across the state. That's incredible. Well, as I said at the State of the Union, you know, Tampa General Hospital is where I was born, it's where I took my first breath. And, you know, I, I've always said we're so lucky to have TGH in our backyard. Now I know why. Uh, congratulations Thank to you. all your incredible work and your team that works alongside you. Thank you very much. I Ab appreciate it. Absolutely, John. We're going to share John's story and more about the incredible things happening at Tampa General Hospital on BloomTampaBay.com. And we'll be back with more Bloom right after this. You're watching Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging, saving lives through early detection. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. A highly decorated combat veteran after serving 21 years in the Army is sharing her powerful story of overcoming a series of life-changing experiences like 
being raped and left for dead, and later being left financially and emotionally drained after a bitter divorce in her new book, From the Battlefield to the Boardroom. Joining me now is renowned motivational speaker, life coach, and empowerment expert, and the proud recipient of the Barack Obama Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award, Dr. Sonia Stribling. Doctor, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, and we always like to start here. Thank you for your service in the military. And then even more so, being so open about your life story and helping other people heal. Yes, I, well, I, it feels like I don't have a choice because if no one else is gonna do it, why not me? And it's just really giving people the opportunity to know that it's okay to come from what we call a battlefield, mm -hmm. your life story and the things that have happened to you. Because having a child at 15 years old, wow, that in itself, when I think back and being 17 years old and being raped and left for dead and joining the United States military and then having three combat tours, yeah, I know that's a journey and it's a story. But life, I believe, happens for you, not just to you. I, I believe that too, I really do. Um, and I think the most important thing and the, the biggest takeaway probably for you is that all the people that admire you and yeah. follow you and read what you write and hear your stories don't feel so alone anymore and know they too can make it through whatever life throws their way. Absolutely and just going back to you know the combat tour going to Iraq and at that time back then I was a battle captain and having been being responsible for a, a KIA killed in action and MIA and the four on the FOBs uh, the operating bases that were in Iraq and just being responsible for that that in itself and I just remember coming home my body came back but mentally and spiritually I didn't come home and just having to deal with that over the years and going through a divorce and all of that and I'm saying that not for you know the listener to think oh, oh my gosh her story but just to know you can come back from all of that now I get the opportunity to stand before uh, men and women that really want to have their next level life or their booming business or the amazing career and just knowing you can come from a battlefield where it's your past and the things that really had you sta stuck and stagnant but really coming over to the boardroom and a boardroom is not corporate America sitting in the room you know table and all of that but your your boardroom is the place where you feel empowered where you feel inspired and where you really want to take action of having that better life so what advice do you share with people because it is so easy when you've been beaten down so much yeah. you know whether life is beating you down or maybe you're making decisions that beat yourself down whatever it might be how do you pivot and find that inner courage to, to move on? That's such a great question. And I love when people ask me that. And the number one thing is one, who's in your circle? Who's surrounding you? And it shouldn't, I recommend, it's, ne it's not just the people who say, hey, it's gonna be okay. And I always say, I don't train ballerinas and princesses, I train warriors. Not the physical sense of the position, but I mean the inner person of like, hey, life is just happening. But get people in your circle that are gonna tell you the truth and love and are not gonna allow you to just sit there. So that's number one, getting the right circle or being around the right people. And number two, really start looking at, why is this happening to me? And a lot of people ask, well, why? Oh, Lord, why me? Why me? But why is it happening? But what lessons, more importantly, mm -hmm. can I take away from this? I learned a lot from the military, where it gave me the opportunity to come into this space and this place now to help hundreds of thousands. I would say a half a million people, women, uh, specifically, to help them have a better life and a booming business. You just don't wake up one day and say, hey, I just want this booming business. A $28 million company in three years? I have to say that, because my life in the past I'm supposed to be the statistic. I'm supposed to be the one sitting on the other side and saying, somebody, please help me. But I made a decision that I was going to get up and help other people have that life that they deserve and they surely desire. And that all starts with a mindset. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, when we were writing the book From the Battlefield to the Boardroom, The Infinite Desire to Win, we talk a lot about mindset and people talk about it all the time mindset mindset but what is that really it is w really when you get into a place and a space where you ask yourself the question what do I need to move forward and what do I need to leave behind in order for me to leave forward and there are times where you have to make a hard decision not a, just a commitment but a decision to do something different and do something better what do you hope the takeaway is when people have the opportunity to read your book? Wow, one, that it's not just a book. It is the, the new, I would say, battle plan 
um, that comes with a checklist that it really is a new, I want to say Bible, but it's something that they can use and really help them with their next level life. That they take the instructions and the advice that's in there and not just read about it, like just the words that jump up on off the page, but really give them actions to take today, not tomorrow, because what is what is happening is this, your future is praying for you to really step and step into these shoes of being a better person. So that book is not just a book. I would say it's the gateway to your next level life. Did you ever think back in the day when you gave birth to your first child and you were facing all this hardship Absolutely. that you would be sitting here sharing this incredible story? Absolutely not. I was voted least likely to succeed simply because I had a child at 15 years old. And when I say I was a statistic back then, I was. But today I probably get to sit and say, again, life happened for me. It didn't happen to me. I get to be the person that may stand in the forefront and just share the journey that I go on. The three beautiful children that I gave birth to, um, to my new encore husband, my new husband, because I went through, you know, I was married for uh, 18 years and I went through a divorce that really took me to this place. I was in a place of being suicidal. And so I want people to really understand Somebody has to stand in the forefront and share, hey, it's okay, but you don't get to stay there. And if my life can be a testament and a journey for someone else to follow, I'm all in for it. God bless you. Thank you for thank sharing you. that story with thank us. So and much. again, thank you for your service. Thank you for helping me. Go we're going <laughs> to share Dr. Sonia's story on bloomtampabay.com. And coming up on Bloom, the Today Show's Joy Bauer has important information about food labels and ingredients to be on the lookout for. We'll be right back. Living the Tampa Bay lifestyle means enjoying the sand, sun, and outdoors fun. So get out, get active, and nurture those healthy habits. Hey there, I'm Gail Guayardo, host of Bloom. Now there's a new all-inclusive place with everything you need to shape your lifestyle, boost your health, and improve your wellness. BloomTampaBay.com, Tampa Bay's premier health and wellness website, made to help you feel good. Whether you're a fitness fanatic, beauty buff, or just want to take your first step towards positive change, this free website is for you. See the Bay Area's hottest fitness products, the latest workout crazes, and learn nutrition tips from the experts. Plus, discover local events and experiences designed with your well-being in mind. Cultivate a healthy mind, body, and soul. Check out BloomTampaBay.com, your local health and wellness website. That's bloomtampabay.com. Welcome back. It's time for this week's What the Health with the Today Show's nutrition, health, and lifestyle expert, Joy Bauer. Joy, it's great to see you. It's always great to see you, Gail. So Joy, I know a lot of times we learn amazing recipes, but part of the segments are you educating us about the right foods and the right ingredients to use. That's right. And I think there's been so much buzz these days on processed foods and ultra processed foods. And um, I, I think there's a lot of confusion over it. And the first thing I want to say is that processed foods have a really negative reputation and sometimes rightfully so. Because if you could imagine we take something like whole grain flour and then through processing, we strip off all of the good stuff and then we pack it with sugar and saturated fat and sodium to make cookies. That would be an example of a negative with processing. But on the flip side, sometimes what happens is through processing, we actually make foods more convenient, more affordable, more accessible, and highly nutritious. So when it comes to processing, it's really about reading the label and the end product that matters most because sometimes we process things like nut butters and frozen vegetables and salsa and hummus and whole grain cereals. And in that case, processing becomes a positive. So I thought it would be fun to sort of show everybody how to navigate processed packaged foods to figure out, you know, which ones are the better ones. Yeah, I like this idea because for a lot of consumers, including myself, reading the labels can be difficult and confusing. Yeah, there's a lot of numbers and you don't need to look at all of the numbers. That's the good news. So here's the least you need to know when you're okay. looking at a label. And so what we're going to show is a healthy label on the side and an unhealthy one on the right side. The very first thing you want to do is look at that highlighted serving size. 
you need to imagine and visualize what a serving size looks like because all the other numbers are based on that serving size. For example, for the healthy cereal, if it's one and a half cups, it's 140 calories. But if you have three cups, you have to double all those other numbers. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I highlighted calories. We don't really count calories anymore, but for a lot of people that are managing their weight, it's nice to have just like a ballpark number as to what you're eating. So I do keep that highlighted. Now we're going to zip down to fat. We don't necessarily care about total fat because heart healthy fat is really good for us. It keeps us feeling satiated. It prevents glucose spikes. It makes food palatable. But saturated fat is the type of fat that increases our heart disease risk. So the lower, the better. On the left, you see it's nice and low. Um, on the right, it's a baked good that's not so healthy. It's a little bit elevated. Then we go down to sodium. The lower the sodium, the better, because so many people have high blood pressure, and we know that sodium increases the risk. So try to keep that number as low as you can. And if you're comparing products, let's say two marinara sauces, you could go with the one that has a lower amount of sodium, and sodium is hidden everywhere. Okay. Then and what, zipping. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to inter interrupt. I was just saying, then how do we move from like the food labels to understanding the ingredients listed on them? So the ingredient list is really important. When you go to an ingredient list, you just, the, the simpler, the better. And if you could recognize most of the foods, it's a big bonus. You, you know, you're not going to always recognize everything because some things sound very scientific and complicated and when in fact they could be regular foods. But look at the difference of these labels. You know, the one with the unhealthy, it has artificial dyes. It's got a big fat list, a lot of complicated sounding things. And the first ingredient is sugar. I mean, that's a red flag all in and of itself. But the healthy cereal, you see whole grain oats. And the very first ingredient, because ingredients are listed by weight, is predominant within that particular food item. So there's a lot of sugar in the unhealthy label. And there's not so much in the healthy cereal. So, you know, when it comes to labels, that's what you want to look for. And I think a few tips for everybody when you're navigating the grocery store. The first thing is you want to look for foods that don't have an excessive amount of added sugar. Don't worry about the total sugar. Because natural sugar can come from vegetables and fruits, and they come packed with vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. But the fewer, um, fewer grams of added sugar, the better off you are. Go to the grocery store with a list because then you're gonna to stick to your list and you don't wanna just randomly be checking things into your cart. And when it comes to snack foods, no more than two items because the more snacks we bring home into the house, the more snacks we eat. So if we keep, can keep it to one or two items, I think the better off you're gonna be. I've been doing this in my household. It's not a fan favorite because they open up the pantry and they're like, we need snacks, but it, you know what? It keeps us all in check. So, Joy, thank you for all of this incredible advice. We really appreciate you. You got, and I'm not surprised you're doing everything right, Gal. Well, you're, you're doing your family a favor. Thank you. I appreciate that, and I love following your advice. So, thank you so much, Joy. And follow Joy on social media. She's always posting the coolest videos and recipes, and you can find all of her advice on bloomtampabay.com. We'll be back with more Bloom right after this. You're watching Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging. We begin where your checkup ends. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. Many times we have lawyers, financial planners, and even a personal organizer to help us with stressful aspects of life. So why not have an advocate to navigate the confusing and frustrating medical landscape? Well, now you can. Joining me now is the healthcare advocate pharmacist, Patrick Alonzo. Patrick, welcome to Bloom. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Well, I think this is a really cool concept because I can speak from personal experience. Um, my late mother and father, I was their caregiver. I had to go with them to their doctor's appointments. And it's so confusing when you find yourself in that space. So having somebody that knows the language, knows how to navigate it is a game changer. Absolutely. And you can always tell 
when somebody has multiple doctors, multiple medications, so we call it polypharmacy, so over five medications, they really have a lot of struggles in the healthcare system. It's so hard keeping part of all, keeping track of all the moving parts. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about this term. I looked it up in you know online before the interview of having these multiple medications and how that creates an issue for the patients and even for the providers. Sure, so the number one thing that I've noticed as a pharmacist, I mean, this is where my training takes me, it always goes to the medication list first, right? Anytime someone has multiple providers, they're in different healthcare systems, there are different medi medica medication lists. So the lists are always a little bit different. And even if it's off by one drug, I mean, that could really be potentially harmful. And something else I really harp on is that polypharmacy accounts for about 30% of hospital admissions. So we're really trying to keep our loved ones out of the hospital. So how are you helping people? Like how does the program work? Sure, so I help them organize everything. So with all the moving parts, I ask for different medical records and I just consolidate everything. I get them the information that they need. So they have medication lists, past medical history, um, any type of treatments that they've already had, past surgeries, and I give them the information they need. Sometimes I go to the appointments with them, but what happens is they show up, they're on time. They get through the healthcare system and the doctor's appointments so much faster and more efficiently so that now they can, A, enjoy their better light quality of life, mm -hmm. but also they feel peace of mind that somebody's watching their back and that these dangerous medication issues are less likely to happen. Okay, now I know we, we broadcast in 350 million homes and stream, uh, so you can't be by everybody's side, so you right. kind of provided a checklist of things that folks can do, and it starts with bring someone with you to the appointments, that's okay. Absolutely. and. Even having somebody there, even if it's just for emotional support, really helps them feel more comfortable in what could be a stressful setting. And keep the information organized, because you say there's a lot of moving parts and you would think a healthcare provider would appreciate that. Absolutely, I always try to tell any of my clients or anybody that's looking for some advocacy, try to be an A-plus patient, be on time, be ready, um, have all your information ready to go, and it really helps the office. It takes strain off the doctor's office, and it takes strain off just the stressful environment that sometimes going to the doctor or being in a healthcare setting might have. And while you don't probably advocate being Dr. Google, you do say it's important to research and be ready to ask questions because people freeze up, they don't know what to ask, but this is where it really comes in handy. Certainly, this kind of tracks back to having somebody there with you. If you get nervous, having a new diagnosis is really scary. Having somebody there with you to step in, ask questions, but also know what, you're, know what to expect. Understand that there might be some different challenges depending on the disease state. And if you know kind of what's ahead of you, it's a lot easier to navigate. And last but not least, close the gap in healthcare. And that's part of gaining an understanding of your health and your insurance policy. Sure, so health insurance policies can change annually. And the big thing there is medications change formularies. So one medication might be covered one year and then the next year it's not. So that could open you up to potentially a huge bill or certain services or treatments are covered and we don't want any surprises. So it's really good to know your insurance and know what you're covered with. And, and I'm sure Patrick, we're just covering the tip of the iceberg of what you do, but thank you for coming, sharing that with our Bloom viewers. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me, Gail. Absolutely, and we're gonna share Patrick's story on bloomtampabay.com. And before we go to break, it's time for today's Bloom trivia question. Which government agency decides if a medicine is prescription or non-prescription? The FDA, CDC, US U.S. Department of Health and Human Services or National Institutes of Health. We'll have the answer later on Bloom. The following portion of Bloom is sponsored by Renewal by Anderson of Tampa. Now is the perfect time to add beauty to your home with uniquely crafted custom windows and doors. Joining me now to talk about the importance of full service replacement windows and doors is Renewal by Anderson's Vice President of Marketing, Chelsea Zerpola. Welcome back. It's so great to see you, Chelsea. So great to see you as well. So Chelsea, why is window and door replacement important for homes? When you're looking at not only the aesthetics and the curb appeal, but the energy efficiency nature of why we replace windows and doors, I think you really gotta consider what does that mean? You know, can you customize these beautiful windows? Is it gonna be a hard process? And with Renewal by Anderson, we take that to a whole different level and making sure that it's not only the best process for you, 
Well, we have the best windows. What types of windows and doors does Renewal by Anderson offer? Every type of window that you can imagine. Because it's custom made, there's not a window that's sitting in a warehouse that we're pulling out in hopes that it fits in your home. They're custom made down to an eighth of an inch for you. So color, style, hardware, all of those things are custom made. So anything from a double hung to a gliding to an awning window, they're all custom made for you. What sets Renewal by Anderson apart from other window and door companies? Well, we're a full service turnkey organization and we're here to delight our customers. At the end of the day, we want to be able to have raving fans that are talking about Renewal by Anderson and what we've been able to accomplish for their home, not only from an aesthetics perspective, but saving them money on our energy bills. That's a huge factor and conversation that lots of individuals are talking about because it is difficult. Those really high energy bills are a real problem. And I think too, what sets you apart from a customer's perspective mm -hmm. is that Renewal by Anderson has stood the test to time. You know, you're right here in the United States of America mm -hmm. and the products that you offer have been tested as well. Absolutely. We did a 20 year durability test that we're really proud of that installed the, our windows in the harshest climates in the United States. And then we measured that 20 years later to see, did it stand the test of time? And we can really be proud in saying, yes, it did. You know, lots of things change in life, but your windows and doors don't have to, especially with Renewal by Anderson Fibrex windows. Yeah, and, and the material really matters, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to your health and wellness, because mm -hmm. not all windows are created equally. And some of the windows that people are installing into their homes are like emitting gases. Yeah. There's lots of studies out there saying the off-gassing is a huge problem. So really proud of the SES certification, indoor air quality certification that Renewal by Anderson Fibrex windows have. And it allows you to, again, be healthier, stay more comfortable in your home longer. And, and let's talk about the process of the free complimentary design consultation. I don't think people realize that this is really an important mm -hmm. part of the process. Absolutely, because you don't want somebody to throw a bid under your door. You want someone that's going to listen to your concerns, create those beautiful windows and doors from scratch with your specifications, and then educate you in the process to make sure that you have the right windows for the right look and feel that you want for your home and the right application. Yeah, and this is not just some you know quick process. These mm -hmm. you know folks, they come and they spend time. They really care about helping homeowners make the right decisions. Absolutely, we take 60 to 90 minutes and we set aside the time, whether we need that time or not, to answer all the questions, to educate all of our homeowners so they make the right choice in, in choosing the right company for their needs. Yeah, it's a an great investment to make as a homeowner, and it's wonderful we have a trusted company like you to help Thank us out. You. Thank you so much, Chelsea. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And head to rbafla.com or call 813-377-3136 for more details about custom coastal impact windows and doors. Take advantage of this limited time offer and call today to set up your complimentary design consultation. Mention code Bloom when calling to receive an additional 5% off your project. We'll be back with more Bloom right after this. The preceding portion of Bloom was sponsored by Renewal by Anderson of Tampa. Welcome back to Bloom. As many of us know, healthcare costs can catch us off guard and add up quickly. And since most of us now have high deductibles and out-of-pocket expenses, our next guest has ways to limit the surprise and save on healthcare related expenses. Joining me now from Her Money Solutions is Kristen Delfo. It is so great to see you again. Thanks, Gail. Thanks for having me. Well, I love what you're talking about today because so many people don't even know these workarounds that can save you thousands of dollars. And the first starts with lab work requests. Yeah, I just learned about this about six months ago. So oftentimes when we need lab work, we go to our doctor, they send it to the lab, we go get our blood taken and we pray that the bill is not horrible. So, and then we get shocked and have to pay it. So there's a workaround and you can order your lab tests online. You get the doctor to tell you what tests they want run. You go online and the best one that I found has been jasonhealth.com mm -hmm. has been the least expensive and they work with Quest. You set everything up at Quest all through Jason 
and the savings have been around 80%, wow. I found. Wow. Yeah, because those of us with high deductible plans were looking at it, and my lab work would have built out to about two grand, and then it turns out to be about 80 bucks. That's unbelievable. So I, it's huge. It's huge because I had all this blood work that needed to be done for thyroid issues that was not covered by my insurance, and the out-of-pocket was astronomical yeah. and that's what ended up getting to the bottom of what was going on is the extended blood work so what about cash versus insurance okay so this really works the best when it comes to scans and testing like MRIs CAT scans insurance is notorious for not wanting to cover those until you've done a lot of other things like PT particularly for MRIs but when you go in and you call I would call in advance and you say I've got a doctor's note you still need the, the script mm -hmm. right but you call them and say, what's my insurance price and what's the cash price? And oftentimes the insurance price can be like 12, 1500 bucks. And then the cash price might be 300. It's wow. huge. Uh, yeah, that, that one is unbelievable. I, I did that for a scan one time and it was a huge savings. Yeah. All right, if you don't have dental insurance, what do you do? Yeah. This is the one that I have also found has saved a lot of people money and they really don't know about it. There's a website called dentalplants.com. It's like a Costco membership to dentists. So you pay for the year, it's a couple hundred bucks if you have a family, and then you get fixed lower prices than the cash price that the dentist would charge you otherwise. And there are a lot of dentists. You can see which networks your dentist uh, participates in and you can see the price so if a cash price for a cleaning is 150 here it might be 80 or 90 and all of these things start to add up the dentists like it because they don't have to fight with the insurance companies to cover and you as a consumer like it because you already know what's going to cost and you can choose what's done it's not the insurance telling you I you have to have this kind of filling you can mm -hmm. say I want that kind of filling but I know how much it's gonna cost me and it's even for major things you said your husband used this same oh. provider to figure out how to get a root canal yes it covered it was a discounted price for the root canal for the crown it's all on there so you already know what you're dealing with and particularly for people who don't have access to dental insurance this is a way around and they dentalplants.com will send you coupons by email off the price mm -hmm. of the membership so every little bit helps every little bit helps and if you have dental insurance you even know that that barely covers everything so thank exactly. you so much Kristen. you're welcome we're going to share this incredible advice with you on bloomtampabay.com we'll be right back It's time for today's Bloom Trivia question. Which government agency decides if a medicine is prescription or non-prescription? The FDA, CDC, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, or National Institutes of Health? The answer is the FDA. The FDA oversees both prescription and over-the-counter medicines, both brand-named products and generic forms. Well, we hope you'll tune in again on the next Bloom presented by Lifeguard Imaging. Find out what your poop can tell you about your health. Gut health expert Ella DeVar is sharing how she tailors treatment plans based on what she discovers in stool samples. And dietitian Brooke Sobe has ways to add fiber to your diet to keep things moving. So stay healthy, everyone, and I will see you on the next Bloom. Content segments during Bloom were paid for by Renewal by Anderson of Tampa. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today.